Have you ever wanted to create your own handicapping dream team? You can now build your own superstar handicapping lineup using our Pick Your Team program at both wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. Even more exciting, until Sunday, January 16th at midnight, you can save 15% off your Pick Your Team using coupon code PYT15 when checking out. Dave Koken, Marco D'Angelo, and Ralph Michaels, John Ryan, Joseph D'Amico, and Rocketman. The combinations are endless, and you can choose up to five handicappers. You start saving once you choose any two handicappers of your choice, and you can pay as little as under $6 per handicapper. Who will make your dream lineup? Just go to Wager Talk or Sports Memo, click Pick Your Team, and personally hand select your handicapping roster. Don't forget coupon code PYT15 will expire January 16th, so make sure to get your 15% discount. Welcome, everyone. This is the NFL Wildcard Playoff Round Edition of the Predictive Playbook Show, presented by Sports Memo TV. And I got you covered. As you can tell, I only have Buster in the house with me, which is always a great thing. But Rocky is, you know, he's on the mend. He's on the DL here with a uh, you know, pretty serious uh, cold. Uh, we wish him well. And um, I don't know, Buster, he's... he's on the DL, and I, and I want to bust him because he went 0-2, yet he's hitting 71% for his premium clients. And I kind of took it personally that, you know, I guess we're just not a premium client for him. Like, what do well, you think? Well, I, I, I we mentioned it last week uh, <laughs> that he's, you know, hitting that kind of percentage. But he always, for some reason, the last couple of weeks, he saves his, uh, his worst pick for, for the show. I don't know uh, what he's got against us, <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, we had to, we had to you know, the truth be told, he's, he's not really sick. And we had, to, we had to put him on the sidelines for a week because of a, we know he was going out of his way just to give us his losing pick of the week, you know what I mean, and put it on the show. And that's not good for everybody else that's watching. So, anyways, brother, yeah. get uh, get better soon. Yeah, one game suspension. I think <laughs> that's uh, one show suspension, I guess we'd have to call it. But seriously, the show has done remarkably well here over the last six weeks of NFL action. We are 14-5. and five. That translates to 74% winners against the spread. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty outstanding in my book. And it's better than Rocky's premium record. Uh, so, that means... You and I must be running really hot on this show, but we don't break it down individually unless we have a guy hitting 71% for his premium and goes 0-2 on our show. So, you know, we have to kick him around a little bit. Hopefully he's laughing and laughter, uh, you know, is the best medicine out there anyway. Yeah. So, Buster, let's, we'll get started here now with um, your game, and that is a uh, big game. It's the third time these teams have played each other. As a hint, we're at Highmark Stadium as another hint. It's Saturday at 8.15. That means the Buffalo Bills are hosting the dreaded rival New England Patriots. It's like Darth Vader is coming to Buffalo. New England's 10-7 and seven on the year, 10-7 and seven against the spread. Buffalo 11-6, and six, won the AFC East for the second year in a row. They are 9-6-2 and two against the number. Total for this game opened at 44 and a half and Buffalo is a four point home favorite. Take it away, Buster, and tell us where the best bet is in this matchup. Okay, John. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, just a quick mention that you mentioned the high mark stadium or whatever they call it. Like I grew up in that whole area and uh, Ralph Wilson stadium is always, you know, that's what it was or Bill's stadium or whatever. So uh, I don't know. I don't like uh, all these, you know, corporations taking over these big, but I know it's all about the cash. It is. That's kind of sad that they changed it from that, to, you know, Ralph Wilson, who was a great owner for that club and basically kept that team. That's why it's probably still in Buffalo if it wasn't for him. So uh, anyways, I, uh, I regret, I, I, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. I just uh, thought I'd mention that when you, when, when you mentioned the name of that stadium, that's all. I was just kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's that's not what I think when I think of going to a Bills game. So, <laughs> and anyways, and I'm, and believe me, I'm not a Bills fan. Being living in that area, I am kind of a Bills hater more than anything. Although I do respect what this Josh Allen's been doing for the club, and uh, and you might think that because on December 26, when these guys played, we did a video, and I took Buffalo that game in New England, and I'm taking the Bills here minus a four. Uh, like I say, had him, had him when we did the video on the 26th, which was a 33-21 victory. And they 
they looked really good, Buffalo, that game. Actually, I believe that was uh, Josh Allen's best game by far. I mean, he sometimes doesn't look the best, but the, the kid is a natural quarterback. There's no doubt about it. Um, we know going up against the hoodie in the playoffs is tough. There's no doubt about it. But I've been waiting to bet against this team when it comes to the playoffs. They, uh, they've, they've played great. They, I think they've played over their heads, to tell you the truth. And, uh, and on these videos all year when we've been doing them, I've been trying to find plays where the team has the better offense, the better defense, and it has a pretty good number. A couple of times I found underdogs with the best uh, offense and the best defense. Well, here it's no different. Buffalo has the fifth best offense in the NFL, and they were actually closer to number one, and they've just had a couple bad games in Buffalo the last last two. But, I mean, th the weather's been atrocious when they played when they play the Jets in Atlanta. Uh, so that's maybe why their offense has come down a little bit. Uh, as far as New England, New England has a 15th ranked offense. In the defense, Buffalo's number one, New England number four. So there's a, there is a big advantage there to Buffalo. And I, I just think Buffalo, it's, it's their time. I, I don't know if they can go all the way, but I really like them in this spot especially. Now, you know, everybody will talk about that Monday night game. Mac Jones throwing just three passes the whole game, and uh, he run the ball down Buffalo's throat. I don't think that's going to happen. It, well, it didn't happen the last game. I, I actually said on this video when we did that game in New England, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're ready for that. I guess they just weren't ready for it. It was, it was too tough. And uh, this game, I don't think the wind is going to be as bad as it was that game on Monday night, but the weather is going to be frigid. It's going to be 10 Fahrenheit in Buffalo. So uh, that's going to be tough. And New England's offense, they haven't even been able to get 300 yards on Buffalo's defense in those two games. I think it was 248 and 288, something like that. They have been under 300 yards, and I think that's what's going to win the day for the Bills at the end of the day is the defense. So, And, of course, John, before uh, I sign off to your pick, have a little stat for you. A Buffalo Last 15 at home, 10 4 and 1 against the spread. Let's make this 11 4 and 1. And we think the Bills win this one pretty comfortably, maybe by 10 points. Uh, great breakdown, Buster. And you know, I love the numbers. Those numbers don't lie, and they lead you often to two trips to the window because you have to go back and cash that winning ticket. I do think I ran my simulator for the playoffs, and I haven't ever acted on a, a futures bet based on this, but it's kind of fun to do. It's a Python app. It goes through 10,000 simulations of the current playoffs. And to your point, Buffalo is the number one pick from that simulation from the AFC. Oh, really? And, uh, that's oh, what it came up with for what it's that. worth. You know, you can run a, a simulation model like that a, a yeah. gazillion different ways with different right. ratings. Yeah. But the two top teams um, – not surprising, Tampa Bay, 16% chance to win the Super Bowl. Green Bay, 14%. Uh, Buffalo was 11%. Hmm. And believe it or not, the Tennessee Titans um, had a, a like a 4.8% chance. Yeah. And Eagles are the you know the last seed in the NFC playoffs, and the Eagles are, are sitting almost at the same percentage. And I kind of found that interesting as well. So, so that's simulations or whatever you're doing. They must go through a lot of statistical data because, you know, I don't think Tennessee has the best stats, but uh, you know how to run the ball down somebody's throat, and I don't know if you can stat that. That's true, and it goes through 30 years of playoff history. Uh, I see. You know, the okay. seedings, uh, where you're seated, how many times to play on the road, all that kind of good stuff. And, and you know, it drills down pretty deep. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see if that actually uh, plays out. It seems to me the NFC playoffs is a collision course with Tampa Bay and Green Bay in the mm -hmm. NFC. I don't, I mean, they're head and shoulders better than anyone else. I think the the, the dangerous team right now is the San Francisco 49ers. I was just going to say to you, John, that's that's the team that I put a little future bet on is San Francisco. Yep. They just. Again, statistically, they they're they're very good. They're I think they're seventh in offense, third in defense, and that's with uh, Garoppolo not playing, right? So, anyways, I, I'm I'm yeah. with you on San Fran. It's going to be tough. They're going to be fantastic games. I'm very much looking forward to this weekend. That's for sure. 
Absolutely. All right, so now we'll move over to my game here, and that is going to be the Raiders traveling to Cincinnati, which it's going to be pretty cold there as well. Uh, Cincinnati 10 and 7. So are the Raiders. Raiders are 8 and 9 against the spread. Bengals are a positive 10 and 7 against the spread. This is a game buster where the line is minus 5.5 Bengals. Uh, it was 6, as you mentioned before we came on the air. Over under is 49.5. Uh, I like the Raiders to win this game. And I, I've already completed the, the model research. And now I'm just going to check the fundamental research for the rest of the week and keep an eye on the news because of the COVID. But uh, it seems like we're getting less and less COVID-related news in the NFL, and hopefully we're on the other side of the mountain, so to speak, with that. We can put it all in our rearview mirror. But this game is is very intriguing to me, for lack of a better word, and uh, I have some interesting stuff here. For the, you know, the upset alert is what I call these things, where a team is favored and I think they can actually win the game. So what I would suggest here is a little in-game betting. You bet the Raiders um, now with the plus five and a half. And then you literally want to hope that Cincinnati scores first in the game and then get the money lined with pizza money. You know, if you're betting um, $100 on that's your regular size bet, then you would take uh, no more than 20 and throw it on the money line as soon as that would happen. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But you have a plan going in for the in-game uh, betting. So supporting this upset alert is a money line situational betting algorithm, uh, which, you know, algorithm is a big word, but, you know, it's, it is what it is. And it's gone 46 and 22 straight up for 68% winning bets, averaging a plus 115 underdog. And it's earned the dime better 28,000 over the last five years. And the requirements are pretty simple. You bet on road teams using the money line that are coming off a home win, which the Raiders are, and now facing a host that lost their previous game to a divisional rival, which was Cincinnati losing to the Browns. That set of simple parameters has done a 39-27-2 and and record against the spread. In addition to the 46-22 and straight-up record, that's 59% against the spread winners over the last five seasons. Now, if we talk playoffs... In our sports query, this uh, host that is fresh off the home loss is just 4-10 and 10 straight up. But the Raiders in this situation, being the road team in the situation, are 11-3 and three against the spread for 79% winners since the 2000 playoffs. And in case you're wondering, road favorites, which obviously they're not favored in this situation, but you can write this down for future reference, they don't do well at all. If uh, the Raiders were favored, it would be almost a direct opposite, 33% winners against the spread. So road teams that are coming off a game in which they scored 31 or more points are 27-39 straight up, which th this is on the Raiders, 36-28-1 <clears throat> for 56% winners, and the under is 41-25 uh, and 25 for 62% winners dating back to the 2002 playoffs the last 20 seasons. But the Raiders Buster scored 35 in their three-point win, three-point overtime win, I might add, over the Chargers. Um, and playoff matchups in which the road team is coming off a game scoring 35 or more are 19 and 23 straight up, 21 and 20, and one push against the spread. But here again, the under. A gaudy 28 and 14 for 67% winners over the last 20 seasons. It's also 5-2 and two for 71% under winners over the last five playoff seasons. So not only do I like the Raiders in this matchup, I like the Raiders and the under. And I would not parlay them because I don't like parlays. I don't like teasers. But I would play them independently uh, the same amount on each, on each uh, bet. Raiders and the under. Any comments on that play, uh, Buster? Sounds like a pretty good play to me. We talked about it uh, before the show about how we both like the Raiders here. And uh, that under, now that you say that, I remember if I think we were talking about this earlier, that they were pretty close. I know the final score looks like Cincinnati just buried them, but I, I know it was a close game in the fourth quarter and 
few plays, something happened. Again, my memory doesn't serve me right <laughs> as well as you get older here. But, yeah, I remember it was uh, fairly – it was a lot closer than what the score indicated. So, And I think the Raiders are – as I always like to see, I, it looks like the Raiders are playing with house money. And, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. they, they've, they had to win every game that they've won, go into Indianapolis and win. And now, so, so again, they're playing with house money. They've they, they got nothing to lose, really, because they didn't even think they'd get here. And they truly have, uh, for lack of a better word, they have a gunslinger in Derek Carr. I mean, he, when he, I saw him after that game, and he was just so psyched to be in the playoffs that it, it hit me right away that this is this is a team that is like uh, kind of like the 49ers. You know, you, Garoppolo can sling the ball over the field. Uh, Derek Carr's probably even better at it. Ooh. And uh, he's not afraid. Derek Carr has never been afraid to throw an interception, for example. And he will fit it into tight spots. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he gets a couple of those completions early in the game. Cincinnati, I think, is going to be on their heels and in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Well, to, well, to me, Carr – like you said about fitting in sometimes to his detriment, he does that. Right. And that's, that could be the problem yeah. too sometimes. Right. So, but again, these, these premier uh, quarterbacks, like I say, I, I'm really looking for Josh Allen to have another huge game, you know, on Saturday night. So, and uh, a guy like Carr, he could, you know, he, he could step it up too. I think uh, he'll probably have all his receivers back too. There's a, somebody was injured there. That was a big guy for him. So, Anyways, yeah, again, as I said earlier, really looking forward to these games. The, you know, the competitiveness is here. You, you do see a couple of big lines. I think Kansas City's 13 and some of the Tampa's eight or nine. But, I mean, for the most part, we should get a lot of good competitive games this weekend. I uh, can't wait. I mean, it was a spectacular week 18. Then we had a spectacular uh, game on Monday. It's always spectacular when you have a 5%er on the team that wins. Nice. Granted, had had a little bit of luck there, but I also did a, a pizza money bet for the clients, for my premium clients. It was Georgia minus ten and a half and over fifty and a half. It <laughs> hit. It was plus seven twenty five, and uh, you know sometimes you have to have the horseshoe in, in your corner, and nice. that was a lucky win. But nevertheless, it was a win, and I'm glad the clients won. Hopefully, you ran out and bought a lottery ticket right after that. Uh, I didn't. Should have. I didn't. Scared of lottery tickets. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the way you won that game, I would have ran out and got one. Yeah, that's true. That was very fortuitous, for lack of a better word. Hey, uh, sometimes you get the break, sometimes you don't. That's, you know, when you've been gambling like us for over 30 years, you know, you got to take the good with the bad and, and not let either win or loss really affect you because mentally you get you get screwed up in this game. All of a sudden, next thing you know, you're 2-16. and 16 because you're mentally not there so and you're making bad decisions. So, yeah, that was excellent. So hopefully you yeah. went on it. You're going to go on a really good run, John, because that's I what happens too, right? Do. Yeah, I hope we both do. I mean, oh, yeah, shows, I've been doing very well. So I'm, yeah. yeah, so let's – hopefully all well, you put out two plays, so hopefully we have uh, three winners here. It sounds good. It sounds real good. We do miss you, Rocky. Yeah. We do miss you, buddy. We, you know, we wouldn't bust on you if we didn't like you. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's the old adage. So, Buster, thank you for your time. As always, next up for the Sports Memo TV will be Buster and I again doing college basketball for the Wednesday night card, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching, and take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell because then you get every single notification as soon as we publish a show, and that is in every sport. We're going to be starting up some uh, more content with college basketball, We'll even delve into the PGA Tour a little bit. So it's going to be broad and it's going to be fun. So have yourself a great rest of the week. We look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday for the NFL playoff round here. It's just great stuff. And until then, remember to bet with your head and not over it. And may all the wins be yours. Have you ever wanted to create your own handicapping dream team? You can now build your own superstar handicapping lineup using our Pick Your Team program at both wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. Even more exciting, until Sunday, January 16th at midnight, you can save 15% off your Pick Your Team using coupon code PYT15 when checking out. Dave Koken, Marco D'Angelo, and Ralph Michaels, John Ryan, Joseph D'Amico, and Rocketman. The combinations are endless, and you can choose up to five handicappers. 
You start saving once you choose any two handicappers of your choice, and you can pay as little as under $6 per handicapper. Who will make your dream lineup? Just go to Wager Talk or Sports Memo, click Pick Your Team, and personally hand select your handicapping roster. Don't forget coupon code PYT15 will expire January 16th, so make sure to get your 15% discount.